President Trump admitted something pretty damning in his interview with Time Magazine. Uh, it's about foreign policy. Here's what he said. I've been doing this, in all fairness, uh, when I first came into the office. The first night, you weren't here, but they say, Sir, we're ready to go. I said, where? Uh, they had some people in a certain country, Yemen, where they, had, where they had them surveilled and they needed to go ahead to kill them. To kill them. But in other words, they wanted to, to, the right to go. So they're telling me this, and this happened uh, for two, three weeks, four weeks, and they s kept coming to me at weird times. I don't care about that. And they're in the parts of the world that the most people have never even heard about. Uh, they were in cities that nobody's, nobody ever heard about, or towns. And in some cases, they're ISIS or Al-Qaeda. And so they say, sir, we have a situation we'd like to be able to go, and they tell me what. Uh, then after about four or five weeks, I said, wait a minute. By the time they get to me, and I get back to them, usually it's over anyway. It's gone. They're gone. They couldn't fire. You know, under Obama, under the Obama administration, they get back to them three or four weeks later, and they say, it's okay to go. They say, okay, go. They left three weeks ago. Uh, so I say to myself, I'm a believer in professionals. These people over there, whether it's in Iraq or in Yemen or anywhere, Libya, they went to West Point or wherever, Annapolis. They went to Air Force Academy. I said to the general, I said, how good the lieutenants, the captains, their majors, their colonels, their professionals, they love doing it. Uh, they know every inch of the territory, right? Uh, I say, why am I telling them? So I authorize the generals to do the fighting, you know. I don't think people get how big of an admission that is. That's Donald Trump saying, forget everything I said on the campaign trail about foreign policy. I'm now going to say the, the generals can make all the decisions. Well, guess what, Don? When all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. There's never been an instance in U.S. history where the generals go, you know what? I think the answer is less war. This, look, this is exactly what happened in Vietnam. You had presidents, including Lyndon B. Johnson, like, I don't know, dog. I don't know if we need to fucking put more troops in there. I mean, we've been there for a while, and it doesn't seem like it's the best. And the general's like, no, we need more troops. The answer from the people in the military is always going to be, we need a military solution. It's the same thing. You go to a doctor who's a specialist in one area or another. They will always read into your symptoms what their specialty is. So go to an oncologist, uh, cancer. That's always what happens. So that all they know is war. They don't know negotiations. They don't know political compromise. They don't know sitting down at the table with an adversary and working out a deal. And Trump is like, I make the best deals. Here he's saying, deals, forget deals. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, here's the main point. Outsource foreign policy directly to the military-industrial complex. He's, it, he's handing over the keys to foreign policy to the neocon deep state. That is exactly what he's doing here. And remember, Trump's first raid that he approved as president was a raid that the Obama administration, even with their lax standards when it comes to civilian casualties, even they said... I'm not approving that raid because you're going to have many civilian casualties. Your intelligence is not good. So Obama rejected that raid multiple times. The first time they come to go to President Trump, they go, we want to do this raid. He goes, tremendous, believe me, go ahead. And then they do it, and what happens? They kill about 30 civilians, including an 8-year-old American girl. Think about that. So, you don't have a commander-in-chief. Hey, Don, did it ever occur to you that maybe people elected you because sometimes on the campaign trail you'd say, We gotta get, out, get away from over there. Why are we doing stupid wars? We did a stupid war in Iraq. We did a stupid war in Afghanistan. We gotta bring the troops home. We gotta rebuild here. We gotta spend our resources here. Tremendous. This is the argument he made half the time. And now he's saying, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna implement foreign policy in any way. I'm just saying, go ahead, generals, you do whatever you want. So you're just giving it away. Okay, whatever. People, people in the CIA, you do whatever you want. Generals, you do whatever you want. Pentagon, you do whatever you want. I don't care. I don't care. That is fucking crazy, man. That is crazy. And you ready for this? Th this part actually is the one that scares me the most. So he's admitting there, yeah, the neocon deep state. I'm going to let them do whatever they want. They have a green light. Do whatever they want. Forget everything I said on the campaign trail. Irrelevant. But here's the scariest part. 
He said, you know what's interesting? I'm getting very good marks in foreign policy. People would not think of me in that light. I'm just saying, and you read the same things I read. I'm getting A's and I'm getting A pluses on foreign policy, and nobody thought about it. So what he's saying there is he's getting nothing but positive reinforcement for giving up his duty as commander-in-chief and going back on his campaign promises to get us out of those wars. So what that means is everybody in the establishment, everybody in the elite circle, everybody in the neocon deep state, and everybody in the corporate media pat him on the head when he goes and he bombs shit. And he does more military raids. And he kills more innocent civilians. There's been an increase in drone strikes of 432% since Donald Trump took over. And it's not like Obama was light on the drone strikes. They increased drone strikes. They're increasing the troop levels in Afghanistan. They increased the troop levels in Syria. Yes, there are boots on the ground. They're doubling down on interventions all over the place. And he says, oh, I get A's, I get A pluses. It's tremendous, believe me. The public is going, no, stop going everywhere and wasting our money. But all Donnie hears is his advisors, the establishment, the neocon deep state, the generals, and corporate media patting him on the head and saying, you're a good president. You were an unhinged lunatic until you, until you started bombing shit, and now you're great. Brian Williams, remember when they were shooting the missiles on, on, into the, on the Syrian uh, airport? I'm reminded of the beauty, the beauty of our weapons. It's amazing. Um, you had Fareed Zakaria. I think Trump became president tonight because he bombed stuff. Corporate media, even s what's supposed to be left-wing corporate media. Oh, yes. Fucking Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi agreed with Donald Trump bombing the Syrian government. What happened? I thought you were the resistance and the opposition until he starts bombing people and opening up a new front and a new war. The whole system is broken. It's not just Trump. The whole fucking system is broken. We just casually accepted now, or not we, the establishment has casually accepted. Yeah, we wage offensive wars against countries that didn't attack us, and that's cool. And they pat him on the head, and they tell him he's great when he does it. He's outsourced foreign policy to the military-industrial complex, and because the establishment is so rotten and corrupt, they go, oh, you're great because you did that. I get A's, I get A pluses. The most positive reinforcement he gets is when he starts blowing shit up. That is a sad, sad, scary state of affairs.